In this video, we will show what line breeding looks like in leopard geckos. If you guys haven't yet, check out our first video on line breeding. I'll leave a link to it right here in the top right hand corner. So Mendelian genetics are simple. You take a snow gecko and breed it to another snow gecko and you're going to get babies that are snow. Now here we have a super snow, which means that this gecko is actually carrying two copies of the snow gene. And this gecko is a regular snow and it's only carrying one copy of the snow gene. And you can see one copy versus two copies, but it is a simple change that takes place when you have one copy versus two copies. And remember, these genetics are only at one locus point. So even if you have two copies of the gene, it's just that your dad passed one on and your mom passed one on and it was located at the same position so that the gecko either expresses one copy or expresses two copies. Here are two of the babies from that pairing that I just showed you. As you can see, they both inherited one copy of the snow gene from each of those parents. So mom passed on one copy, dad passed on the other copy, and therefore both of these geckos wound up being super snows since they have two copies. You can see with Mendelian genetics, the appearance of the mutation is very, very similar oftentimes. This gecko actually has a little bit more spotting and is a little bit darker than this gecko, but that's where line breeding comes into play. That's telling me that this gecko's DNA has some other polygenetic stuff going on inside of it besides this leopard gecko's DNA. You have to remember, in the same way that almost no two humans look exactly alike, it's the same in the animal world. There are going to be animals that look strikingly alike and patterns that look strikingly alike, but I would venture to say that every single animal has somewhat of a different pattern. Whether it's noticeable to your eyes or not, it's the size of a spot, the amount of the spots, the shape of the nose, the thickness of the tail. Something is going on with that animal that is different than any other animal on the face of the planet. And that's because of genetic diversity. Anytime you have Mendelian genetics, which is simple pass on a gene or don't pass on a gene genetics, there are still many, many polygenetic traits that are located in those geckos DNA to give it slightly different appearances than its siblings. Now here's an example of polygenetic breeding. Here we have a tangerine mom in my left hand and we have a bright tangerine dad in my right hand. These two actually bred this year and I wanna show you some of their babies. Now because polygenetic means multiple genes combining to give a gecko a certain look. I want you to take a look at this gecko in my right hand real quick. His name is Maui. He is our male leopard gecko, but you could see that he has some green coloration to him. He has some orange coloration to him. And he also has those little grayish purple areas are actually spotting or pattern marking. Whereas with this girl right here, no green coloration, no spotting coloration, just pure orange. This is also called super hypo, when the gecko doesn't have any pattern on the head or any pattern on the body. So this gecko is orange and green with some pattern, and this gecko is pure orange with no pattern. Let's take a look at some of the babies and the variants of what comes out with polygenetic breeding. All right, since babies are a lot more flighty, we're gonna look at one baby at a time. First, let's look at the gecko that appears to inherit the dad's green coloration and the mom's hypo or lack of pattern combination. So this is a very beautiful gecko right here. Camera is not doing her justice, but as I get closer to you, you can really start to see some of those green undertones right there, but you can also see those purplish gray spotting patterns, those are inherited from the dad. But 
there's not much spotting or not much pattern on this gecko because the mom had almost no pattern at all. The mom was a pure nice orange, the dad was a bright fire orange with some green coloration in him, and this gecko, as you can see, inherited traits from both parents. Nice orange coloration and nice green coloration from the dad. With a very low amount of pattern because of the mom's genetics. So beautiful, beautiful gecko. Next, let's take a look at its clutch mate. So this is the exact sibling of that gecko, but look how much variation there is. Neither one of those geckos before this one had stripes going down its sides, but for whatever reason, this one inherited a stripe pattern. That is because when you're working with polygenetic traits, there are multiple genes combining in the gecko's DNA to give it a certain appearance. This gecko clearly inherited the orange coloration from dad and the orange coloration from mom. As of right now, it's not as orange as the last gecko, but that doesn't mean that it can't get more orange as time goes on. I've hatched some geckos that were less orange as babies than their siblings, and then as adults, they actually turned out to be more orange than those babies that were more orange or hatched out more orange. And as you can see, a little bit of green coloration, but not nearly as bright as the other gecko. This one, on the other hand, has much more purplish gray pattern, which is actually signifying that pattern does exist in this gecko. And it's not as patternless as the mom. So it inherited the dad and the mom's color, so it's tangerine. It inherited a little bit of green from the dad, but not much. And it inherited a decent amount of pattern from the dad and less inheritance of the mom's hypo or zero pattern look. Okay, one last example I wanna cover with you guys on line breeding. This is such a good example of how polygenetic breeding works that I couldn't help myself but to show you. Here is a bold stripe female in my left hand. You can see her crawling up my arm there, but you can clearly see two stripes demonstrated on both upper laterals of her body. Last year, she was bred to this male, which is pretty hypo. He's a white and yellow male, but he does not have any striping pattern going on. He's got some speckling that kind of goes in the formation of a line, but nothing like this girl, right? So I kind of look at it like this guy's body is a blank slate compared to this girl's body who has very distinctive patterning. Now I want to show you a couple of the babies that popped out so you could see the strength of polygenetic inheritance. Now here's an example of two of the male babies that actually popped out from that combination and one of them's making a getaway here but let's take a look at this one real quick what do you see on this gecko's body you see stripes right or the outline of a stripe ish oh my gosh this one is okay calm down calm down calm and submissive I'm gonna lower my voice a little bit i'm probably freaking them out okay so we're gonna do one at a time here is one of the babies that popped out from that combination of those two parents I just showed you. Now this gecko, I would say is clearly white and yellow. It has very high amounts of like a pastel yellow and it has very high amounts of clean and crisp white. So that inheritance is Mendelian and it comes from the dad who is a white and yellow. But the polygenetic inheritance in this animal is the bold stripe from the mom. So only one of the parents was bold stripe, but look how this gecko has a clean, clear back with two very distinctive and very obvious stripe-like patterns going down its side right there. That is the strength of polygenetic breeding. Remember in my illustration, because bold stripe is located at, let's just say, four different locus points. If mom passed on the striping effect at three of those locus points and dad only passed on the non-striping effect at one of those locus points, then that would lead to a baby looking like this, dominated by the mom's pattern. And that is the strength of polygenetic inheritance. You could take a seven foot tall guy and he could have a baby with a five foot tall woman 
and they could have a six foot tall child because inside of the DNA is a combination of many different height genes that the dad passes on and many different height genes that the mom passes on. And if the dad's genes wind up dominating in one of the kids, the kid will be taller. If the mom's genes winds up dominating one of the kids, the kid will be shorter. If both are equally expressed, the kids will be right exactly in the middle. So this, you can see, takes line bred traits from both geckos. And you can see that unlike the mom, the striping is not as dark or it's not as connected but there's definitely striping going on. So just for reference, here's that squirmy one. Here's the other baby from that pairing. So a very nice bold striped female was combined with a somewhat hypo white and yellow male that I showed. And you can still see it has a very clear back. So it didn't inherit any of the dad's spotting going down the back. Cause here's dad. Dad has lots of spotting going down the middle of his back. And his son right here did not inherit any of that spotting going on. Rather, he took a lot of influence from his mom. Here's his mom, very clean back that has no spotting and very bold and distinctive stripes going down the sides. And you can see that this gecko in my left hand is just a pure demonstration of both parents' genetics. But you can see this gecko in my left hand right here took a lot of influence from the mom. So that means that all of those different locus points where the mom passed on her DNA, her DNA was dominating in this gecko's DNA compared to the dad's DNA. One of the benefits of polygenetic breeding is that one parent who has very strong polygenetic traits can really dominate the offspring if the odds and luck or whatever you wanna call it wind up passing on in that way. Now here's just a couple other variances from the same parents. You can see in my left hand right here, this gecko kind of has some spotting and whatnot going in a stripe-like pattern, but it's not as well organized as this gecko right here. Same offspring, but you could really see how in my right hand, the mom's DNA dominates, and in my left hand, it's more of a blending of the two. And then you could get what I would call a little bit less lucky and you would get animals that look less like the desired trait. So we were obviously going for bold stripes with this pattern and we got tons of babies that wound up inheriting strong genetics because of the mom that passed on her genetics strongly. But sometimes the genetics that you're looking for in line breeding will not be ex expressed as thoroughly as desired. And this is a gecko that I would consider to be on the lower end of expression from the mom stripes. It's from the same parents, and you can kind of see that spotting goes in a little bit of a stripe-like pattern, but nowhere close could I say that this gecko has stripes. And so the mom's DNA did not pass on very strong to this offspring, and it was more the dad's DNA. Now. Sometimes lady luck is not always in your favor. So we took this female that is clearly a very dark and bold, bold stripe here, and we bred her with this male, who's a little bit lighter colored because he has the white and yellow gene, but he has pretty significant and distinctive lines going down his side with no pattern in the middle, and we were really, really hoping to create some more bold stripes. Well, let me just show you the variance of what can happen when you do polygenetic breeding or line breeding. So here we have the first baby of two from that last couple that you just saw. As you can see, very clear open back and very distinctive bold lines. But its exact sibling and clutch mate hatched out with no stripes, maybe a little bit down the side of the neck there, which is actually pretty cool, but a completely open back without pattern. And you might say, why would that be? That's because whenever you're working with polygenetic traits or inheritance, sometimes those traits pass on strong, other times those traits do not pass on strong. And that's the pros and the cons of polygenetic breeding. Sometimes you will have a low expression polygenetic trait, like tangerine or black knight or bold stripe, and you'll breed it and it will produce babies that are amazing 
Other times, it will produce babies that take a step back in the opposite direction. The risk reward that you take with lion breeding. Now, I just want to show you one more example of some pretty unlucky inheritance. Here we have another one of our bold stripe females. As you can see, her stripings are a little bit messy and more choppy, but they're very bold and very dark, and they even go down her tail. And we bred it to this same male as we bred our other one to. He's very bright, very clean. His stripings are very distinguishable, very organized, and very neat. And so from that pairing, popped out these two babies. Here's the first of the two babies. You could see clearly inheriting half to three quarters of a stripe on one side and not inheriting any stripe on the other side. Now, to be fair, as these babies grow, they will probably inherit some dark spotting and pattern that will come in along those striped areas. But as you can see, nothing like the desired effect that we were going for, which is a fully striped animal. However, you gotta take your wins with your losses. Check out that tail right there you could see that spotting and that dotting directly down that tail. That's a pretty cool sign, and we will probably be trying to breed this gecko with another bold stripe that has very pronounced striping on the body so that the tail striping can pass along with the body striping. And here's the sibling to that gecko, almost the exact identical same thing. You can see did not inherit a lot of the mom's pattern or striping or darkness on its sides there and it did not inherit that much striping along the tail unlike the other one so this might be one that we either use as just a breeder to create some more like pretty normals i say pretty normals because even the normals that we breed over here because we're breeding white and yellow into them and just very crisp and clear and clean genetics they still look really really nice so we're either going to make some really pretty normals from her or we are going to wind up putting her up for sale over the next month or two as her colors fully come in and people can really see the greens and the blues and the bright yellows as her color and pattern develop. Now, because you guys are here for examples and information, I'm going to even show you one more couple of babies from that same pairing that we were just talking about so that you could see some of the variants of inheritance when working with polygenetic traits. So this baby actually came out really nice, pretty nice. This is from that same pairing that the last two siblings were from that did not have like any striping, just like that one down the shoulder. This one actually wound up inheriting striping down both sides and it's pretty nice. And also look at that, striping down the tail. That's really amazing because that's a little bit more rare in the leopard gecko world is to get striping going down the tail like that. So you can see that striping going down the tail. That's beautiful. This will definitely be a holdback. It was temperature determined to be a female. So when next breeding season comes, we will breed our best looking bold stripe male to her, cross our fingers, and see what happens with the polygenetic inheritance next year. And similar to what you saw with the last two geckos, this one did not inherit a lot of bold striping influence from either parent, which is possible when you're working with polygenetic traits because there could be dozens or hundreds of specific locus points that influence the overall look of a gecko. If half of them or less than half of them actually wind up not inheriting strong amounts of that polygenetic trait, then you could expect that the baby would look like this. It would look pretty normal and just be displaying more of its natural, normal genetics that it has from the start of creation. Well, what did you guys think? Please let me know in a comment below. If you like this type of video, share and subscribe so that you can be notified about every new video that we release. We also are live streaming now about two times a week, spontaneously just popping in there, answering your guys' questions and spending some time with you. So make sure you ring that notification bell so that you can be notified when we go live and you can jump in with your questions or comments as they pertain to this awesome hobby that we are a part of. Thank you guys so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And remember, have a geeky gecko great day.
You give the light that shines so bright. You.